and today's video is a highly requested video. I will share with you my honest warm-up routine and my updated warm-up routine because I have shared one in the past already, but this was about two or three years ago. So now I'm going to share with you my updated warm-up routine, meaning all the exercises that I handpick from all the technical exercises that I learned and that I do every day because I find that these are the ones that wake up my fingers, that activate them even when I don't have too much time. And today I will show you all of that. The entire warm-up routine, including all the exercises, scales, arpeggios, chromatic scales, chords, just general warm-up exercises, all of the routine I would say doesn't take more than 10 minutes if you just do one exercise after the other. So if you are interested in seeing my updated warm-up routine, which this time I have filmed from above so that you can see exactly which finger I use and it's easier for you to follow the fingerings and the exercises in general, then keep on watching. So I start out my warm-up routine by moving my wrists very gently. And what I do is I simply silently press one key with one finger, starting with the thumb and then going through each finger until I reach the fifth finger and then move my wrists clockwise and counterclockwise. When I do this exercise, I really try to make sure that my elbow is relaxed, my arm is relaxed, everything is relaxed, and I feel how my arm reacts to the movement and how certain points give in when I move my wrist upwards or downwards, and I make sure to feel this relaxation in order to remember it when I get into fast passages. I should mention that all the exercises that I do in this video I usually do them with both hands at the same time, but of course, if you're starting out or if these exercises are new to you, it makes a lot of sense to practice these exercises with separate hands. So just for the sake of showing you my actual routine, I'm doing most of these exercises with both hands simultaneously. But as I said, please consider practicing these exercises with the hands separately because that makes much more sense if you are just learning them. My second exercise is one that is geared towards finger independence. I start out with the G in the left hand and the C in the right hand and slowly play one, two, and then play the notes fast. When I play it slowly, I make sure to really have this feeling of being in close contact with the key, really sticking my fingers onto the keys. And when I play fast, I really try to focus on the minimal movement aspect. And as soon as I reached the final note, I play it in a staccato way and I throw my wrist upwards or forwards in a way my hand goes forward in order to make sure that there is a release and that there is no tension in my arm, in my wrist, in my elbow, in my shoulder, <laughs> no tension anywhere. And as the exercise progresses, I always add a note. and do the same thing so I start with my fifth finger and then I do the same exercise only instead of a C major scale setting I do it with a chromatic setting in order to also practice the finger positions on the black keys The next 
exercise that I do is another finger independence exercise because that is what I always feel makes most sense to practice when warming up. And it is an exercise where I press my third finger down, hold the key, and then I repeat my fourth finger and I repeat it by really watching out to not move any other finger of my hand. When I learned this exercise, my teacher told me, make sure that all the other fingers are sleeping. So this is what I really try to look out for, that every other finger is sleeping and it really is only my fourth finger in that case that is active. <laughs> the same thing by holding down my fourth finger and only having the fifth active finger and then again I hold on my fifth finger and only try to have a fourth active finger. Again, I just want to stress that it makes sense to practice this exercise with a hand separately. I just play it with both hands together for time reasons, but also because I've been practicing this exercise for a very long time. Also, when I started out, I practiced this exercise much slower. So keep all that in mind. You don't need to imitate the tempo that I'm using or imitate playing both hands at the same time. And then the last general warm-up exercise that I do before I get into the scales is Mozart's Trill. I've made an entire separate video on Mozart's Trill, so feel free to check that out. I will link it in the description box down below. But here, just for the sake of including it in the video, I will play it once. You'll see all the fingerings. There are very specific fingerings that Mozart's trill requires and why it is so effective in my opinion. There is a short version, which is the one that I do every day. And then there is also a long version. Today, I practice the long version only for two of the finger positions. But again, if you want a more in-depth video, then check out my video about Mozart's trill where I go into every single detail. <laughs> I get into the actual scales. So today, just as an example, I chose D minor, but I try to use a different scale with a different tonality every day, just so that my fingers get used to all the different positions. So today I picked D minor. And when practicing scales, I have many exercises, but as I said, today we'll be showing you the ones that I pick to do every single day. And I start out with the one that practices the thumb going under the other fingers because this is usually the technically most challenging moment in a scale. And I start by playing the thumb in a long note and the other fingers as a cluster, as a short note. So I use a kind of dotted rhythm and the thumb is long and the other fingers as a cluster are a short note. And when I play the cluster, I make sure to lift my wrist up very high so that my thumb has all the space in the world to go under. And then when I play the thumb, I make sure to press my wrist down and have it very low. This is an exaggerated movement, which of course I would never use when playing through the entire scale, but for the sake of the exercise and for the sake of having a relaxed wrist, I find it very helpful. 
I do this in both hands and then I also change it up. So I reverse the dotted rhythm and play the long note on the cluster and the short note on the thumb. until the note which comes right after the thumb. So that's usually until the second finger. I hold that second finger and then again practice my thumb going underneath and I repeat the note with the thumb that I will be playing with the thumb. So in D minor, this means that I play up to the E and then I repeat the G a couple of times. Then I play as fast as I can until the next second finger. So this would mean that from the E I play F, G, A because A is my next second finger, and I hold the A for a long time and play my next thumb, which is the D, and I repeat that. And then I play very fast, B flat, C sharp, D, E, and that's how the exercise goes on. And then when going back downwards, I always stop at the second finger, so right before the next change comes, relax by putting my wrist forward, and then play very quickly until my next second finger. I do the same thing in reverse for the left hand, so in D minor this means that Going downwards, I will stop at the C sharp with my second finger, then repeat the A, then play very fast until the G, so B flat, A, G, and then repeat the D, and so on. really trains the feeling of having to move the fingers quickly and also of them being independent and at the same time gives you the time to make the correct movements and not have any bad habits creep in when it comes to the thumb going underneath the other fingers or when it comes to the other fingers having to go above the thumb. Once I've completed these two exercises I actually start playing the scale and I have this exercise where I play one octave slowly, then two octaves in double tempo, three octaves in triple tempo and four octaves in quadruple tempo. I then put them together and I play up and down and also going outwards and inwards and then I combine the whole thing by playing two octaves upwards, outwards, inwards, two octaves upwards and then back down the same thing. Two octaves downwards, outwards, inwards and then two octaves downwards. <laughs> completed the scales, 
I get into the arpeggios. So first I play chord arpeggios and I simply go through four voice chords and play all the alterations that exist in D minor. to move my wrist upwards as the arpeggio continues and then when the next arpeggio starts I go back down and as the four notes continue put my wrist upwards again. Then I practice what I call long arpeggios and there again I focus on the thumb having to go underneath the second and third finger. So my first exercise is the same that I do when I do the scales I do a dotted rhythm and play the thumb and then the other two notes as a cluster and I do the same wrist movement. Again, I practice this in both hands and then I reverse the dotted rhythm so in the end my thumb is the short note and the cluster is the long note. focus on that moment where the thumb goes underneath the other fingers and what I do there is I start out very slowly just by playing three notes upwards and back downwards in an infinite loop and I increase the speed until I play it as fast as I can. While doing that exercise I try to make sure that my wrist doesn't go up or down but just as I would play it if I played through the entire arpeggios, my wrist stays at one level and my fingers are doing all the work. After that, I practice the exercise where I add one note. So I start out with two notes and then add the third, add the fourth, until I've reached a two octave arpeggio. I go backwards and I practice this exercise with both hands separately and then I put them together. Now that I finished the arpeggios, I start practicing chords and I do three voice chords and four voice chords. And after that, I practice the chromatic scale. I like to practice four octaves of chromatic scale in a parallel motion, going upwards and downwards. like to practice two octaves of chromatic scales in thirds so not so comfortable for my finger since it's not a parallel motion but it's the third motion but I think it's a good exercise because that's something that occurs in quite a few pieces so if you include it in your everyday warm-up routine it just kind of becomes an automatic process <laughs> I stretch my fingers. I do this by doing two exercises. The first one is playing the biggest possible interval that I can, which in my case is 11 notes, so C, F, and I just play one note after the other and just really make sure to stretch my span. And then I play tenths in a chromatic way by playing them as actual intervals because this is the biggest interval that I can play simultaneously. And I do that also with both hands, just one octave up and down. And a little bonus 
bonus tip, what I like to do after I've stretched is to actually go back to the scale and to the chromatic scale. So to the exercise which involves really little movements and delicate finger movements because after the stretch I feel like I like my hands to go back to that. So I play through the scale one more time and through the chromatic scale one more time. <laughs> my complete warm-up routine that I do every day and after this routine I really feel ready for any piece for any concert I feel like my fingers have woken up the blood has flown through my muscles and my hands are ready and active to play any virtuoso thing that they need to play as I already mentioned in the beginning of the video, this is the warm-up routine that I do every day. I didn't go in depth into every single exercise. I have several videos where I do go in depth. I have a video on arpeggios, I have a video on the chromatic scale, on Mozart's trill and things like that. So if you're interested in hearing more details and more thoughts and more detailed explanations of the movements that I'm doing, then definitely check those videos out. But this is just so that you have an overview of my current warm-up routine and which exercises I find most effective in order to feel ready for your day of practice or for your day of concert. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. That would help me a lot. I also have a piano course that you can purchase online. I will link that in the description box as well. And it's kind of similar to this video because it is based on technique building exercises. So I include all of these exercises that I have included in this video as well. And of course, some more also. It also includes a workbook where you have actual fingerings and scores for the exercises that I just described and different camera angles. So if you want to go more in depth, then feel free to check the course out as well. The first four lessons are free and then you can decide whether you want to purchase it or not. And other than that, thanks so much for watching and I will see you again in my next video next week. Bye.